Welcome. It's considered a standard part of the algebra curriculum to have kids graph quadratic equations. That is, draw the graphs of curves of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, it's understood that these curves are always going to be u-shaped. That's actually not at all obvious. Uh, there's a little bit of work to that, and I cover that work in another video. But once you've got that out of the belt, that you understand each of these quadratic curves is basically going to be either an upward-facing u or a downward-facing u, there's a very easy technique for graphing them. Not even worth bothering hours of an end of trouble on this. Just do it, is my philosophy. And to show you what I mean, let's do a very specific example. Under the assumption we're at the point that we do believe it's going to be a u-shaped curve. Here goes. Suppose we're asked to graph y equals x squared plus 2x plus, I don't know, 4. Well, here's my trick. Pull out a common factor of x from the first two terms. Rewrite this as x times x plus 2 plus 4. Now, I know the graph is going to be a symmetrical u-shaped curve. I'm going to use that to my advantage. I've forgotten how to tell whether it's upward facing or downward facing. I mean, I know most kids memorize the sign of the leading coefficient tells you what to do. But that's too hard. It's memorization. Not into it. What I'm really interested in is, is it going up high as x gets bigger and bigger, up, way up to feel like an upward facing u, or down low? Let's put in a huge number of x. x is a million. I can see that I will get y is a million times a million plus two plus four. A huge big number. Must be an upward facing u. All right, given that, now I'm set to go. All I'm going to do is identify two points that have the same output. In fact, let's put x equals zero into this formula. It's going to be zero plus four. It is, when x is zero, there's an output of four. Let's put x equals negative 2 into this form, and you see this also produces 0 plus 4. So at negative 2, I see it also has an output of 4. I've already figured out it's an upward facing u, so it must be upward facing u that looks something like this, symmetrical between those two equal outputs. Voila! In fact, without any work, I can even tell you that the vertex must occur at negative 1. I've never had to memorize x equals negative b over 2a. There it is. I've just worked it out. Um, if I want the detail, I can work out the height of that vertex by shoving in x equals negative 1. So I'll get negative 1 times 1 plus 4. That must be height of 3. Okay, extra detail if I feel like doing it. But there's the basic u-shaped curve. Upward facing u, symmetrical between two points of the same height. Done. Uh, let's do it again. Let's do another example. Let's, let's just see how easy that really is. Uh, let's do something like sketching. Uh, let me make it up. y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. All right, upward facing or downward facing? Mm, bit hard to tell right now. Let's put out a common factor of x, 2x plus 3 minus 5. Uh, when x is a million, this is basically going to be a million times 2 million minus 5. That's huge and positive. It must be an upward facing u. Let's now sketch the thing. Uh, I need two inputs that give the same output. What's staring me in the face? When x is 0, I have an output of negative 5. When x is... Hmm, let's see, negative 3 halves, does that do the trick? I have an output of uh, 0 times something, minus 5, negative 5 again. Brilliant. I have an upward facing u, symmetrical between those two points. Voila, it must be a u-shaped curve as follows. I haven't drawn one very symmetrical, but I know that the vertex is going to occur halfway between 0 and negative 3 halves. In fact, the vertex is negative 3 quarters without me even knowing a formula for it. Beautiful. Uh, let's do an example of a downward facing curve, just to make sure that really is okay as well. Let's uh, sketch, for example, y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 10. All right, uh, take out a common factor of x, negative x plus 2 plus 10, and off we go. Upward facing or downward facing? Well, I'll put in a million, million times basically negative a million, a little bit off, plus 10. That's going to be a huge negative number. So basically it's going to be a downward facing curve. Are the two obvious outputs that give the same, it's inputs that give the same output? Yes, put x equals 0 or put x equals 2, they get the same, both give an output of 10. So when x is 0, I get an output of 10. When x is 2, I get an output of 10. We know it's a downward facing curve. Voila, it must be something of that ilk. Symmetrical between those two points, so I can say the vertex occurs at x equals 1. Absolutely lovely. Um, we do make kids, for reasons that just uh, escape me, uh, have kids memorize jargon for different forms of quadratic equations. Uh, for example, if someone gave me a quadratic of this form, which I don't remember what it's called, intercept form or vertex form or something, no, not vertex form, I don't know what it's called. 
I can apply the same trick. Um, yes, I could expand it out and do exactly what I was doing before, but already this form of the equation tells me two inputs that get the same output. Namely, if I put an x equals 3 and put an x equals 5, I get an output of 0 in each case. So I'm in a good position to graph the thing. Um, it's easy to tell it's an upward facing curve, put in a million, 3 times basically a million times a million, making positive. When x is 3, output of 0. When x is 5, output of 0, upward facing curve, symmetrical between two equal outputs. Voila! There it is, and in fact I can tell you the vertex must be halfway, halfway twixt those two, namely at x equals 4. Another form of equation we make kids practice and give a name to, I think this is actually called the vertex form I'm about to write next, y equals 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 2 or something. Um, yes, I could expand this out and do my standard trick from before, but I'm going to just uh, notice something about this curve. This curve is really 2 plus some quantity that's never negative. Something squared is always positive, 2 times something positive is always positive. In fact, this curve is always going to have values 2 and higher. So I can tell that this graph, whatever it is, is never going to dip below the line y equals 2. In fact, it has the value 2 right when this term is 0, that is when x is 3. So I know it's going to have the value 2 when x is 3, and it'll be above the graph thereafter. Well. Knowing it's going to be a symmetrical U-shaped graph, in fact I can tell it's going to be upward facing, put in a million, it's going to be huge, up, want to go upwards again. I can see I must have a curve that looks like this. Voila. Um, if I want I could find where the y-intercept is by putting x equals 0, I just don't feel like doing it right now. So there, there it is. Um, that's the only exception to my little trick here, but uh, it's very easy to graph quadratics, and I don't know why we spend so much time on it. Let me just show you something beautiful for those that like the abstract algebra part of all this. Uh, suppose I apply this technique to y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's pull out a common factor of x, ax plus b, and then plus c at the end. To graph this curve, um, is it going to be upward facing or downward facing? Yes, it's going to depend on whether this is going to be positive or negative for a million. Let's just say it's positive for the moment, doesn't matter. But can I see two inputs that give the same output? Yes. When x is 0, I get an output of c. When x is negative b over a, I get an output of c. Now either it's upward facing or it's downward facing. But whichever, whichever way it is, it matters not. I can tell that the vertex is going to occur halfway between 0 and negative b over a. That is, the vertex must occur at negative b over 2a, which is that formula that so many people like to memorize. My advice is, just do it. Thanks.